Hey guys, this is Megan. Um, so this is my submission for video 4, part A for group 12. Um, so the prompt for part A is as follows. Define T as P sub 2 to R2 by T of P, which equals P of 0, P of 1. And for instance, if P of T equals 3 plus 5T plus 7T squared, then T of P equals 3, 15. Um, so this first question, show that T is a linear transformation. Um, they actually give us a hint for, and we'll take that in just a second. The second part is the question, find a polynomial P in P2 that spans the kernel of T, and describe the range of T. So we'll come back to that in just a minute, but um, show that T is a linear transformation. So um, a linear transformation T from a vector space V into a vector space W is a rule that assigns to each vector X in V a unique vector T of X in W such that T of P plus Q and P and Q being these vectors in V um, for all vectors P, Q, and V. And this should equal the transformation of P plus the transformation of Q. Second property we can expect is that the transformation of some scalar C multiplied by the vector Q should equal that same scalar multiplied by the transformation of Q. And that's for all Q in V and all scalars C. So basically, we're going to take this transformation. And if we have a vector like P and Q here, we can expect with T to have a T of P here and T of Q here. So let's go ahead and see if we can prove this given the parameters. So given T of P equals P sub zero, P of one, we should be able to say that t of p plus q equals this p plus q of zero and p plus q of one. We can break this part further by distributing this zero and this one. So we have p zero zero p1 plus q1 and we can actually break that even further up and this should start looking familiar because this first one looks exactly like tp and we can resume that this one be t of q. And that is the first part of the linear transformation properties we would expect. So the second one involves the scalar c. And we want to be able to say that this actually equals this. So breaking this up, c times p of 0 and then c times p of 1, since we know that that's what t of p was. And then we can take c outside of that. And see that indeed that is c times the transformation of the vector p. So both of those properties seem to be fulfilled which would indicate that T is a linear transformation um, from P2 to P2. So the second question
And the second question asks us to find a polynomial of p in p sub 2 that spans the kernel of t. Um, and when we think of kernels, we should think of the null space of the original vector space. <laughs> um, and then correspondingly, we should think of the range um, if the matrix is m by n, then the range existing in R m, um, because this is where the column space would exist in the OG vector space. Um, so let's go ahead and try and show more about this kernel and this null space. So, looking at a null space, we're trying to set our equation as this, and we want to get our zero vector out. Um, and we have p of zero and p of one, and so we both want these equations to equal zero, um, and that would define this null space we're looking for. Um, so, trying to come up with a polynomial where p of 0 equals 0, you can simply say that t equals 0, right? Um, so p of t equals 0 in this case. Um, and for p of 1 equals 0, to actually create some polynomial, we could do something like t minus 1 equals 0, in which case, um, if t equaled 1, this would be true. So we need a scenario where both of these are true, where t can equal 0 and get to 0, and t can equal 1 and get to 0. Um, and a way we can do this is combining these by multiplying them together. So this could be our polynomial p. Um, and since we know that this was our original matrix, again, as I said, this is a 2 by 1 matrix. And since we knew the range was supposed to be the column space, column space is supposed to be in correspondence with r sub m, and in our case that's 2. Um, so we can expect that our range is in r sub 2. And that is all. Thanks guys.